Peking man or sometimes called Beijing man is a prominent example of Homo erectus, an extinct species of the genus to which modern humans also belong. What's interesting about it is that the name Peking man is a collective term for fossils of about 40 individuals found at Zuccordian near Beijing in the 1920s and early 1930s by an international team of researchers working at a laboratory in Peking. Peking Man was identified as a member of the human lineage by Davidson Black in 1927 on the basis of a single tooth. Later excavations yielded several skull caps and mandibles, facial and limb bones and the teeth of about 40 individuals. These fossils date to about 770,000 to 230,000 years ago and before being assigned to Homo erectus, they were variously classified as Pithecanthropus and Sinanthropus pecunensis. The site at Zucodian was massive, so it was this amazingly complex undertaking to excavate and recover material. Some of the scientists described sending cartloads and even trains full of fossils back to Peking for lab analysis. Good thing about the finding was that the specimens found included six complete skull caps, which helped the researchers learn more about the cranial features. The first complete skull cap discovered at the Peking Man site was unearthed by a Chinese team in a candle lit pit in 1929. From this conducted, Peking Man is characterized by a cranial capacity averaging about 1000 cubic centimeters, though some individual skull capacities approached 1300 cubic centimeters, nearly the size of a modern man's. The skull is flat with a small forehead and with powerful jaws and the teeth are essentially modern though the canines and molars are quite large. When the fossils were discovered, it was a point in the history of Chinese paleoanthropology when China was kicking off its own program. The original fossils were under study at the Peking Union Medical College in 1941. When, with Japanese invasion imminent, an attempt was made to smuggle them out of China and to the United States. During World War II, Chinese authorities packed up the fossils to send them to the United States for safekeeping. Casts of the fossils were made and at the beginning of World War II, the fossils were wrapped up and prepared for shipment to the National History Museum in the US under armed guard by the Marines. The bones were supposed to be transported to a US Marine base and then shipped off. Instead, the fossils vanished, leaving only plaster cars behind. Sadly, the bones that disappeared have never been recovered and no one really knows what happened to them. Because all the pre-war findings at Zuccodian were lost during transit to the United States, Subsequent researchers have had to rely on caste and existing writings from the original discoverers. Some say they were probably in possession of a group of United States Marines who the Japanese captured when the war began between Japan and America. In 1972, U.S. financier Christopher Janis promised a 5,000 U.S. dollar reward for the missing skulls and one woman contacted him asking for $500,000, but she later vanished. In July 2005, the Chinese government founded a committee to find the bones to coincide with the 60th anniversary of the end of World War II. Another theory for the missing fossils was that the bones had sunk with the Japanese ship Awa Maru in 1945. A break in the case came in April 2010 when Paul Bowen, the son of former US Marine Richard Bowen, emailed paleoanthropologist Lee Berger of the University of the Witwatersrand in South Africa claiming that his father had dug up a box of bones while stationed in the port city of Win Hongdao, formerly called 
Qing Wangtao in 1947 during China's Nationalist Communist Civil War. Berger started to investigate further and working with Wu Liu in Zhu Jiu Wu, both of China's Institute for Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing, they went to Win Huangdao in November 2010 to locate the site of the U.S. Marine Base where Bowen was stationed. What they found was that the area is now an industrial hub with numerous warehouses. The researchers report in the South African Journal of Science that the most likely site where Bowen found the bones, which the team located based on Bowen's descriptions and with the help of a local historian, is now a large parking lot and Berger and his colleagues could not excavate the area. So if the bones were buried there and if they survived the parking lot's construction, researchers may find them one day. The area is expected to undergo a large development sometime soon and Berger and his colleagues say local officials at the Cultural Heritage Office have agreed to monitor any excavations in case the bones turn up. The Peking Man site at Zukodian was listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1987. It bears historic evidence of human evolution maintains and passes on its authentic historic information and promotes the research on the origins of early humans. Renewed excavation in the caves beginning in 1958 brought new specimens to light and in addition to fossils, core tools and primitive plate tools were also found, although there was no evidence of the use of fire. Among the world's most well-known fossils, Peking Man is popularly presented in works of fiction such as Philip K. Dick's The Crack in Space, Carolyn G. Hart's Skull Duggery, Robert Sawyer's short story Peking Man, Catherine V. Forrest's Sleeping Bones, Nicole Moan's Lost in Translation, and referred to in Amy Tan's The Bone Setter's Daughter. There was also an episode of Hawaii 5 0 in 1970s where they claimed to have found Peking Man on the island of Hawaii. And with the hope that they do find the missing fossils, we have come to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it and do let us know what you think of it in the comment section down below. For related videos, check our channel out and please do not forget to support us by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel. Till then, this is Halabella and see you soon in our next video.